the yes. History tells us that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party have two distinct legacies. The Republican Party's legacy includes the abolitionists, the NAACP, black colleges, the Emancipation Proclamation, and a multitude of civil rights legislation. The Democratic Party's legacy includes fugitive slave laws, black codes, the Dred Scott decision, Jim Crow laws, and the Ku Klux Klan. After completing my research on the legacies of both political parties, I had to ask myself, how can anyone pledge their loyalty to a political party whose legacy includes lies, lynching, litigation, and legislation that destroyed the lives of millions of blacks? That's when I decided to document my findings in my book, Unfounded Loyalty. In my brief, I told the court that in an effort to impede and deny African Americans the same constitutional rights afforded to all American citizens, the Democratic Party established a pattern of practices by promoting, supporting, sponsoring, financing racially biased entertainment, education, legislation, litigation, and terrorist organizations from 1792 to 1962 and continue certain practices up to 2002. The Democrats' 210 years of racist practices and cover-ups not only negatively affected the entire black race, but these practices infected the entire nation with the most contagious and debilitating social disease known to mankind called racism. Finally, during the past 21 decades, the Democrats successfully disguised and concealed their horrific acts against African Americans by operating and committing these acts under a multitude of aliases. Aliases names like the Confederacy, Jim Crow, Black Codes, Dixiecrats, and the Ku Klux Klan. Congressional records and historical documents and letters and testimonies from several brave black citizens reveal that these weren't separate independent organizations, but they were actual auxiliaries and divisions and or the legislative efforts of the Democratic Party. Senate Bill number 60 was a bill to give African Americans 40 acres and a mule. It was a done deal. We wouldn't be talking about reparations today had the Democratic president at that time signed the bill into law. Democratic President Andrew Johnson vetoed Senate Bill 60. That's why we're still talking about reparations today. Every effort to stop blacks from having the same rights as white citizens was the proud work of the Democratic Party.